here we are for the last of my 109 kit reviews. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous ones, uh, right there is the link to the Hobbycraft Bouchon, and from there you'll be able to go back to the uh, Tamir 109 and back to the Edward 109 by following those links, or you can just head out and find them in the playlist uh, if you are interested in watching the whole series. Uh, so in this one, we're going to be looking at the final um, 109 kit I'll be doing in uh, my next round of building, which is why I'm doing these kit reviews before I start building the kit. And it is another one of the 109 variants similar to the Bouchon, and that is the 148 scale Hobbycraft via S199. Now, if you haven't seen the Bouchon video, just as a quick recap, the Bouchon was a Spanish built 109G, and when they couldn't source the Daimler Band engine, they started using the Merlin engine. Now, Avia, which was a Czechoslovakian company who built the 109 under license, went with a slightly different route. When they couldn't source the Daimler Benz engines at the end of World War II, they did have a source of Jumo engines because they were building HE 111s under license. I think actually the engines may have been built under license um, in Czechoslovakia. So they, they had a source of Jumo engines, which was the same engine that was used on the HE 111. So when they couldn't source the Daimler Benz that the 109 normally had, they installed the Jumo. Now this particular boxing is an Israeli ME 109 and it was interesting because at the end of World War II when everything got partitioned up in the Middle East, now politics aside, because I'm not picking sides here, this is just the history, when the Middle East got partitioned at the end of World War II and a lot of the Arab states started fighting Israel and Israel was fighting the Arab states, the Allies, the Americans and the British supported Israel and they supplied Israel with aircraft but because other Arab countries around them things like Palestine and Lebanon and Egypt were also allies during World War II they ended up with allied aircraft and in this time they actually had Israel flying um, the, the Avia I mean they also had Spitfires and Mustangs and everything else but they had these Avia S199 these, these versions of the ME109 and as we can see here Egypt was flying Spitfires so you had Allied pilots, American and British pilots, who had flown Spitfires and Mustangs against the Germans in World War II at the 109s, now flying 109s for the Israeli Air Force, fighting, you know, the 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 the, the, the Egyptians of the Palestines flying Spitfires. So it was a bit of a role reversal in what air what aircraft they each flew. It was just a, an interesting side story to history that these same pilots who flew Spitfires against 109s were now potentially flying 109s against Spitfires and. It's weird. Um, so to get into this kit, again, if you haven't seen the Bouchon, the Bouchon kit, I recommend watching that first. Hobbycraft is known for not having very much detail in their kit. And this one suffers from the same issue as the Bouchon, which is a general lack of detail. Now, popping into the kit, some of these parts have come off of the sprue, so i got to be careful not to lose anything. Yeah. We'll start with the fuselage sprue, and again, if you haven't seen the Bouchon kit, it's worth watching because you'll see how that one was, the fuselage sprue was labeled Bouchon, this one's labeled Avia, and everything that is on this is specific to the Avia. The cowling is integral to the fuselage, it wasn't molded as a separate piece. Uh, the upper cowling here where the machine guns go, these are your, I believe these are the turbocharger bumps that go on the side of the fuselage, which were common on the G models. The big old fat paddle blade prop, your intakes, uh, these are some more of your antenna, your uh, intake pieces and, and, and antennas and whatnot. The interesting prop spinner that existed as well as the main wheels uh, for this version is included here. And interestingly, if we look at this sprue, this one might look slightly familiar because if I pull out the Bouchon kit, this one-handed. So I pull out the Bouchon kit, it is exactly the same sprue because these are the common 109 sprues and you can see there's actually... Well, unfortunately my battery dies, so I'm not too sure how far into that I got, but we'll start back here. I'm talking about this sprue here, which is a common sprue to all of the Hobbycraft 109s. As I mentioned, if you look on this one, this fuselage has a VIA written on it on the tab here, uh, marking it as the Avia 
um, sprue, the Hispana Bouchon one, had Bouchon written on it to show the Bouchon sprue, but this is common. If I pull up the sprue from the Bouchon, you'll see that it is completely identical um, because it is a common sprue. The only difference is this one has the little nub. You can see the little sprue gate that exists on the end of this piece, and here it includes the underwing cannon pods, uh, whereas on this one, it does not include that bit. You can also see on this end, there's a couple of little nubs for some other barts on the other end. Uh, but other than that, it's ex effectively the exact same sprue uh, because it is a common sprue part. Uh, so that pretty much covers the plastic uh, for this kit. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the instructions again, very typical to the Hobbycraft um, format. Um, this little kind of booklet style. Uh, going through, it's gonna be very similar to the previous one if you've watched the Bouchon. Uh, instra um, review, very similar to that one. Uh, step one is the cockpit, uh, the main part of the cockpit. Step two, you go through the wings. Uh, there's a few holes you've got to drill um, to, uh, um, depending on what version you are making, or for example, for this one, there, there are some holes I need to drill. There's a little bit of a landing light by the looks of it under here you got to do, and a few things here for the underwing cannons if you want to install the cannons and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also something for the top of the wing. I think that's for the big hump on top of the wing. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you just kind of go through your, your references. We'll definitely use online references. Do some research. See if, if what you need to do is uh, for the version you want to make. Uh, step three are some of the interior bits. Um, and then step four... Uh, sorry, step three is including the assembly of the fuselage, and it shows you, uh, for example, the instrument panel, the uh, gun sight, and the um, cockpit, the orientation, how everything should be lined up inside uh, the cockpit, inside the, the fuselage, so you can get everything aligned properly. Your exhaust stacks and your upper wing, uh, your upper fuselage, sorry, insert goes here at the same time. Now, there's also some instructions here um, where to drill the holes. Um, showing you there's a where did I don't even know what we're drilling. It looks like we're drilling a hole for some sort of an exhaust or something. There's also a decal provided for that as well if you choose to go that route. But either way, it does show you um, it's pretty good at showing you what modifications to make for each individual um, version. Uh, on to step four, uh, you've got the canopy. Now this is where I was talking earlier about the late style and the early style. Um, the Avia has this late style um, clear canopy, so you've got the forward windscreen, the um, gun sight, and this later style canopy, whereas the, um, the Bouchon included the earlier style canopy, um, which you can see here. And again, you can see how that sprue gate works. Um, here it's turned sort of 90 degrees this way and it allows the, there's this little T right here, it allows the clear plastic to come in to fill this side. And this is exactly the same um, centerpiece, but you can see how now this sprue gate is turned 90 degrees and it allows the clear plastic to run this way into the, uh, this upper area of the mold that has the lead style canopy. So you can see how that little turning sprue gate allows you to do one version or the other, depending on what kit is being built. Just a little bit of the back-end magic to kit design. But back to the instructions, uh, step four is when you're installing um, the, uh, the canopy, the uh, armor plate, the horizontal stabs. You've also got these, um, I believe these cover the, the supercharger, the turbochargers inside the engine. It shows you to modify them slightly. Uh, also, if you drill the hole, there's this option here, which is a hand crank for the engine, which you can install if you choose uh, that option. I probably will, just because it's cool looking to have that there. Uh, you've also got the, uh, underneath the fuselage, underneath the engine cowling, I should say, there's a little intake. There's two different versions. So again, it's worth it to do your research for the version you're building and see which one you need to apply. And then on the other side, there's the intake for the uh, carb. Uh, you've also got the humps here of the wing. I'm pretty sure these are for the landing gear. Um, I'd have to do some more research online to, for sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's got to do with the, um, the landing gear. Um, and then over here, step five, you've got your main gear. Uh, there's two different options for wheels. 
um, and then your main gear and your door, and you'll see the uh, the orientation of the gear um, is uh, 21 degrees off of uh, center. Doesn't really make any sense. 21 degrees this way and 21 degrees that way. Forty-two, yeah, close enough. Anyways, the uh, the main gear is twenty-one degrees off of vertical, and then the wheel itself is twenty-one degrees off of that. And it should be perfectly vertical up and down. Uh, and if you look at the instructions for the Bouchon, you'll see that that orientation is a little bit different on the other style of one hundred nines, where the gear, the wheel has a little bit of a, an angle to it. So the gear was a 21 here, and that's the same, except here this wheel is angled, but here it's a vertical up and down. And this version, the where the wheel is angled outwards a little bit, it works better on grass strips, but it puts a lot of wear on the tires on asphalt, whereas a perfectly vertical wheel works better on asphalt runways, but makes the aircraft a little squirrely on grass. So that's where you can tell as a later aircraft the, uh, the Avia was designed to run off of all asphalt runways, and that's probably why there's the big hump, uh, because if the wheel is angled, when the wheel folds up, the wheel fits flat in the, in the wing, but if the wheel is cocked out like this, when it folds up, it doesn't lay flat in the wing, and you need this bump to cover the wheel and the wing. So again, pretty good uh, accuracy on the part of Hardycraft for the shape of it all. And then again, over here, step six, we're installing some of the under fuselage stuff, the tail wheel. There's a different couple of different options for how you want to do the tail wheel, uh, whether it's got this little fairing or not, but it shows you all the different heights and how to make it work and, and all that other stuff. Um, there's a short tail wheel and a tall tail wheel. And again, it shows you how to uh, put it all together for the height and the different heights. So that, the main gears go on. Again, it shows you the 21 degrees offset. Should be pretty close with the tabs. They should line up pretty close to what you need. Uh, but you can always measure it out and do that if you have to. Uh, underwing fuselage drop tank, I should say. The underwing cannon pods can be mounted. A pitot tubes, balances, some antennas, all that fun stuff. Uh, step seven, um, some antennas on the rear fuselage and the prop. Um, you also can see here it shows you that where to mount the different antennas um, and distances and everything to get them in the right place. And like I said, it's got the, the big fat paddle blade prop on it, which is nice. Now markings, it does come up with quite a few options for markings. Um, one, two, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five different aircraft. The vast majority of them, they're all Israeli uh, markings. The vast majority of them is this here, this all overall RLM2 color. Um, and then most of them have a red spinner. This aircraft here, which is 112, um, has the, uh, I believe it's a red and white um, striped rudder. Um, the decal is overly sized, so you can put it on and then trim as needed. Uh, so this is all overall RLM2 and it's aircraft 112. Aircraft 120, uh, same thing. It's got a bit of a nose art going on here on uh, the nose and it's a red spinner. Um, same thing with the, the, the rudder marking. Over here we got aircraft 107. Um, and uh, 107 has uh, same thing RLM02 overall with the, the spinner. Uh, it's a little different in the sense that the um, the Star of David national marking, instead of being perfectly vertical when the aircraft is flying, it was painted vertical when the aircraft was sitting on the ground. So it's offset a little bit for that one. Aircraft 110, again, very similar to the rest, um, but, uh, you know, basic RLM overall, overall RLM 02 with the tail band. No striped rudder on these ones. The final option we have down here, I guess it does show you markings and everything, so... Um, these were from 101 Squadron, this is from 101 Squadron, this is from 101 Squadron, uh, June 48, July 48, May of 48. This one here is from 105 Squadron in 1950. Um, it's a little different in the sense that it's painted overall like dark blue over tan with a gray bottom and a yellow spinner. So it's a bit of a camouflage look to it. Um, and then it's got the uh, the horizontal markings and the red and white stripe. Yes, Samantha? Okay, but no video and be quiet because I'm filming. Okay? Why? Because I'm filming. If you want to watch, watch upstairs. Samantha. It has to be completely silent.
Okay, I'm almost done, okay? So yeah, those are the other options you have for this one. Um, again, it's a different aircraft. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to have the 109E, the 109G, the Bouchon, and the Avia all on the same shelf. Um, so it's... Um, if you're looking for a very detailed kit, this is not the option to go with. However, if you're looking for an Avia, this, I believe, is the only option you have in 148th to do this without some serious hacking and cutting and modification of an off-the-shelf kit. Now, that being said, I haven't tried it before, but I'm pretty sure you could probably drop in some aftermarket cockpits for a different one. If you have, like, a, a resin or some photo etch for a 109G, it can probably fit on these. So you can probably do some aftermarket resin uh, cockpits or photo etch if you really wanted to. Now, as I had mentioned, um, if you had watched the Edward, Samantha, quiet, or go upstairs. So as I mentioned, if you'd watched the Edward review, I had mentioned how the cockpit includes a large number of extra uh, parts in terms of the canopy. Um, and that gives you the ability, you know, for example, if you wanted to do, I have to, this bag is so small, I don't want to break anything. Um, you could probably use an Edward canopy as a drop-in for this canopy, and it'd be close enough. The clarity would be a lot better. It's a lot thinner. Um, it isn't quite as distorted. So there's that option as well. If you wanted to go that route, you could probably drop in one of these um, to make up the difference. It might not fit perfect. You might have to do some modification, but that's an option as well to, uh, to, to upgrade this a little bit. As I said, I'm sure with a little bit of effort, you could drop in some resin cockpits or resin pieces or some photo etch onto this aircraft to definitely bump it up a little bit and give it that look that you, uh, you want to give the aircraft for its, its detailed cockpit. Um, so out of the box, you know, it, it's not that great. Uh, it has decent detail. Shape-wise, it looks good. You know, if you're going to build it up with the cockpit closed, wheels up, you know, on a stand somewhere, it's probably going to look really, really good. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to wrap that up there. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, coming up, it's probably going to be a few months, but at least keep an eye out on my uh, monthly What's on My Desk updates. You'll start to see the progress on these kits, and uh, we'll uh, get to see these things finished at some point. So on that note, well, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And we're back because I realized we never looked at the decals. So the decals themselves are quite basic, I guess. Uh, they're the standard, what you'd expect for Hobbycraft. Uh, you get your different um, roundels. There's a couple of different sizes. Uh, these were, there was one off that had a slightly different size roundel. You get all your arrows for your wing walks, your, um, all your stencils, your fuselage markings. Um, there's a couple of other bonus for, oh, there's some extra decals included here for a Hobbycraft kit of a Piper Club and a Hobbycraft P-51 where you can paint up in the Israeli markings by the looks of it. You can reuse some of these onto another kit if you so choose. Uh, but yeah, all the stencils and some of the squadron markings and all the letters and numbers you need uh, to make a bunch of, uh, of kits. Um, and you've got wing locks in different colors. You've also got the fuselage bands in both uh, blue and red. As I said, the red and white striped tail markings. And they also give you a section of numbers. So once again, there's enough numbers here that you can go through and modify and make almost any Israeli um, uh, aircraft that you wanted to using all of these bits and parts. So that's always nice of them to include those features. And on that note, we're going to wrap up. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching, guys. And as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.